Welcome to another Live with Kevin today on a Tuesday morning in Indianapolis, Indiana. So glad that you're with me uh, or with us, I should say. I'll introduce our guest in a few minutes. Um, if you are here with us live, go into your social media platform uh, and hit the comments and say hello. Tell us where you're from. We'd love to know that. Uh, anything to make this more of a real conversation is a benefit for everybody. So if we were in a physical proximity to each other and having a real conversation. Um, that's how I want you to think about this situation, even though we're not in physical proximity. So what that means is if we were together, uh, if you had a question, you would ask it. If you had a comment, you would share it. If you had an idea, you would offer it, right? So why not do that here? Uh, because when you do, if you'll put that in the comments and send that question or comment or idea, it will make for a better conversation. It will make for a better experience for you. You might get a very valuable nugget for yourself and it eventually will make a better podcast. You can see up over my shoulder, whoops, other, other shoulder. You can see that this, if you didn't know, will be an episode of the Remarkable Leadership Podcast. And so what I'm going to do now while you're busily, if you're live, typing in your hellos, what I'm going to do is count down where we will trim this for the podcast. So that will begin in Marissa for you in three, two, one. If you want better relationships and who doesn't, we need to be better communicators. This is a profound truth and it is the focus of our conversation today. And while we have been in relationships and communicating our entire lives, we can all get better at it at work, at home, and as leaders. Join us today as we help you understand and unlock the communication code. Welcome to another episode of the Remarkable Leadership, po Remarkable Leadership Podcast, where we are helping leaders grow personally and professionally to lead more effectively and make a bigger difference for their teams, organizations, and the world. If you are listening to this podcast, you could be live for future episodes on your favorite social channel. You can find out how to do that and when to join us by going to our Facebook or LinkedIn groups. Just go to remarkablepodcast.com slash Facebook or remarkablepodcast.com slash LinkedIn or subscribe to our YouTube channel. Today's episode is brought to you by our Remarkable Master Classes. Pick from 13 important life and leadership skills to help you become more effective, productive, and confident while overcoming some of a leader's toughest challenges. Learn more and sign up at remarkablemasterclass.com. And with that, let me bring in my guest. His name is Jeremy Kubacek. He's been here with me before, long ago. Uh, he's back. I don't remember when it was. I was going to look it up, and then I didn't get around to that. We'll have it in the show notes for you, everybody. Let me introduce Jeremy to you. And then we'll dive in. He is a powerful communicator, a serial entrepreneur, and a content builder. He creates content used by some of the largest companies around the globe, found in the six books he has authored, including his latest, The Communication Code, co-authored with his business partner, Steve Cockrum. Jeremy is the co-founder of Giant, a company that certifies coaches and consultants that serve companies and their employees. He, started, he has started over 25 companies while living in Oklahoma City, Moscow, Atlanta, and London. And welcome back to the show, Jeremy. Glad to have you. Um, thanks for joining us. Kevin, always good to be with you. I love what you do, and I'm just grateful to be with you. And uh, you'd probably been more grateful if my phone hadn't gone off, but that's another story, everybody. Um, I, I was telling him before we started 424 episodes, you'd think I'd remember to turn off my phone before we start. Uh, so um, l listen, we have been together, but it's been a while and and many people who are with us have not, uh, don't know you well. So um, tell us a little bit about the journey that leads you, Jeremy, to this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So well, my, the whole journey, what I'm after is I want people to become more relationally intelligent because I keep watching what happens when they're not. And I've spent my career in leadership. You know, I used to uh, uh, run the leader cast events and, and built that and built the catalyst conferences and ran John Maxwell's worlds for a number of years, started companies in lots of places and then have written my own books. And every time what I keep finding is that we have this pandemic of um, cynical know-it-alls 
who don't know what it's like to be on the other side of themselves. And I've, I've been that myself. So it's really the goal of my life and what I'm trying to accomplish is help people uh, see what it's like to be on the other side of themselves, but then give them actual practical tools to not only solve it for themselves, but change the dynamics of the relationships in their life. So uh, I mentioned in the introduction, six books, this is the sixth book. It's called the communication code. So um, you really, I think answered already sort of why this book, uh, but I'm curious as to the title. Um, why do you think of it or why should we think of communication yeah. as having a code? Yeah. So here's, here's what I want you to think about. If you're listening to this on a podcast or live here, uh, the communication code, let, think about communication. Communication is a transmission. I'm transmitting something. So when I transmit something, transmission has an expectation. Every transmission has an expectation. It's like, I'm communicating something to you. It means, uh, Hey, Kevin, I'd love to get together soon and uh, talk about a few things. Okay. What's the agenda? What's the, what's the expectation to attached to that? What are you wanting? So when you understand that most people miscommunicate, which means we mess up the expectation transfer. We don't, we're not aware. We don't know, or ha we haven't solved the expectation of the other person. That means we, we won't meet their needs. And then we can further um, disappoint people like, oh, I did it again. Yep. And so there's a, we, we, what Steve and I realized was this happened, kept happening with he and I, and we had an infamous uh, session. This was eight years ago. We've been using this tool for about eight years. Uh, we were sitting in this restaurant called Jack and Alice in London. Steve's British. And I used, I used to live in London. And so we're sitting in this restaurant. I just gotten back from the States. I just closed a pretty large deal and I was pretty excited about it. And so I came to Steve and I'm like, dude, let's go, man. I'm, I want to talk. So my expectation was to celebrate. I start sharing my what happened and Steve uh, starts to go, huh? Well, well, that's not how we talked about it. Why did why did you do it that way? I thought we were going to do X, Y and Z. He starts critiquing the very deal that I closed when what I closed was bigger than what we had talked about. But it didn't happen the way that we had talked, that we thought it would happen. It happened a different way. But his critique caused me to turn beet red. And I started to literally build up. And what I realized was every time, this was happening every time with Steve. Every time I'd have a celebration, there'd be a critique attached to it. In his mind, he thought he was collaborating. But it was coming out as critique. Didn't feel like that to you. And, that has and never happened. Too. To anyone who's <laughs> listening, right, ever, where someone felt like they were collaborating, but to you, it felt like a critique, right? And and therefore, I, I was like, that's not what I'm looking for right now. There's a time and place. So I said it. Why do you always critique? It's like putting water on my fire. I've got this cake with candles I'm trying to celebrate, and you just doused it with water. And he goes, well, why didn't you tell me you wanted to celebrate? I'm like, well, why didn't you know I wanted to celebrate? And it took us about two hours and we figured out, we just actually committed to stay and solve the issue that kept happening. And then we started figuring out what was happening with our spouse and other people. And we figured out there's code words and everyone's, if they could actually send the code word, then there's a better chance that expectations will get meet, which means that communications will go better, which means that relationships will be unlocked. I want to get to the all of the code words. People, if you're paying close attention, uh, you might know that we've already mentioned three of them, but we'll get to that in a minute. But there's two, there's like three other things I think we need to talk about before we dive in to the words themselves. And, and, and we'll do that in a minute. Uh, and both uh, the first two of these ideas have already come up in our conversation, but I think it's important for us to talk about. You talk about the idea of relational trust. Most people would just use the word trust. What do you mean when you say relational trust mm -hmm. and how does it relate to this conversation? Yeah. So I, I'll, I'll take it a step further. Again, we, we uh, focus at Giant on relational intelligence. So an unintelligent 
person will have relational issues. So a relationally unintelligent person is someone who's not built relational trust. So relational trust is the idea that when we're, com when we're communicating, we're doing it in the framework of a relationship, not in the framework of a transaction. And a transaction is very different than, uh, than a relationship. So the transaction is just, yeah, commodity, right? Back and forth. It, so if you're inside a relationship, there's this relational trust or a relational distrust. There's relational intelligence or relational unintelligence. What tends to take place is um, people have the same tendencies and we're not aware of what we do. And so take the, take the spouse, uh, the husband, typically uh, the, the female, I'm just generalizing here, but the female, the, the, the spouse will say, hey, I, I really need to talk. And this, the woman starts going into detail. The man tries to solve it. And all of a sudden, the wife goes, never mind, never mind. Uh, and then they pull back. And then she begins to talk to other friends who will listen because her husband never listens. And then she says, you know, Dale never listens. He'll never change. He's always the same. Meaning he, he has a tendency to, to critique, but he's not doesn't show care. So he doesn't know how to care for me. So I have to get my needs met in other places. Well, there's well, and, a and relational so it, distrust. Yeah. So going back to your earlier, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Going back mm -hmm. to your earlier point that once we have these code words, and we're going to talk about this more, but the idea is that it, it doesn't necessarily mean that Dale isn't capable of care. It's right. just that's not what he's thinking. Like, I, I'll take an example, a simil very similar example. Um, you know, Jeremy, you know uh, the kind of work that I do. We do very similar work. And so all day long, people are asking me for my advice. And when I go home and hear about my wife's day at work, that is not what she wants from me. So we could use the code words as a way to talk about that. But no. what I learned a long time ago is I, that she may want advice about some work issue mm -hmm. at some point, but not first. And that's until right. I realize that that's not what she needs first, and I have to be the one to make the adjustment. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not saying I'm perfect at it. I'm way better, yeah. way better at it than I used to be. <laughs> um, th then that that has the chance to make a huge impact, including building relational trust we then what we've done is we've created common language so that people can use the common language because common language builds object uh objective um relation or communication not subjective so subjective subjectivity is where all drama comes from you know kevin you never you always why do you why can't you like subjective thoughts versus common language is like Hey, um, I really need you to care. I just need care today. Today, I don't really need critique. I just need you to listen. Yep. Got it. You sent a code word. I've heard it. Now I have to respond to it. You you said two things made me think of my father who used to say, Kevin, always and never are a very long time. And the, the other problem with those two words are, are that as long as I can think of one time when it wasn't true, then I negate everything that you just said. And, and, That's right. and, there, and there we go to drama. I, I, I love that. Well, I don't love drama, but um, except on the screen. Uh, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, I love that. So the other thing that you guys talk about early in the book and that we mentioned briefly, and it relates to what we've just been talking about is the idea of expectations. And, and I think the older and hopefully wiser that I get, the more I realize how very important and underappreciated expectations are, not just for us as leaders, certainly for us mm -hmm. as leaders, setting clearer expectations. People can't read our minds, right? Uh, right? But in all areas of our lives as well. So anything beyond what we've already said that you want to comment on here? Yeah. So expectations, um, they have uh, they have long um, memories because you you think about when you've your expectations have not been met historically. So if you want, if you're listening to this and you want to significantly change the relationships that you have, then you've got to do a little bit of work to go back and first recognize it. Second, apologize. And then third, create a new standard, which is going to take 
weeks, months for people to see that it's legit and it's real, that you actually have changed. Most people are just unaware that they tend to critique or uh, their killjoys to other people. They just don't know that. So therefore, and so when they don't know it, then they think it's the other person. Damn, she woke up on the other wrong side of the bed this morning. Or what's up with him? Well, you know, it could be you. It could be that every single time that you're with someone, you find fault. And they see it as critical. They don't see it as you trying to help them. Exactly. So yeah. then that creates a dynamic which then means that my expectations become limited and maybe even resigned because I'm going to put a wall up to protect myself from you. And every time we have a communication and it is exactly the same as the last one and the last one and the last one and the last one, the wall goes higher and higher and higher and higher. And my expectations for us to have a good relationship go lower and lower and lower. Yeah. And, and all that wall does is make sure that not like any wall, nothing's getting through it. That's it. Right? Nothing's getting right. through it. So we've been talking about examples, Jeremy, that are both personal and professional. Um, and, and there's if if we're on a podcast called the Remarkable Leadership Podcast, we need to talk a little bit about that leadership role piece, which means there are power dynamics at play, right? So talk a little bit about about what that looks like, uh, what that how that matters in this conversation. Yeah. So, you know, you think back to history, um, you go, okay, if I have a, if, if I'm thinking of a relationship in my life, the power dynamics are, um, um, well, who is that person to me? Are they older than me? Um, are they um, a father figure? Are they a teacher, a principal? There's power at play with age, with title. Um, are they a CEO in their world? And so therefore they're kind of a bigger thing in their world. Um, so those are all power moves. And then you put in personality. Then you might have a more type A personality. So all of those together could could make it feel like I'm subservient uh, to you because of age, stage, title, personality. So being aware then that your power dynamics can actually shut people down and you may not be aware of what it's like to be on the other side of you and how and why people distrust you because all they've experienced is your power and your critique. So they don't feel, uh, you know, in, engaged. They don't feel that you're fighting for them. They might feel like you're fighting against them. Okay. Uh, we, we keep talking about the code words, but I haven't asked you or allowed you, if you will, to sort of outline them all. By my count, we've actually you've actually mentioned four of the five. Uh, yep. So they all start with C, which I immediately love because I like alliteration uh, and it helps us remember them, of course. Mm -hmm. So um, why don't you just very quickly describe mm -hmm. each of the five? Yep. I'll pop them on the screen for those watching as you do that go ahead yeah first one is celebrate so what we're saying is that people have an expectation they have a code word so celebration is when uh someone wants to talk about something they're excited about i just want to celebrate i'm not saying a parade i'm just saying i want to be able to to celebrate and so celebration is one care is another so care is when someone is uh looking for you to listen or just to uh just just to be with them or care about the things they care about um, and so care is going to be different for different personalities, but that's ultimately what care is. Third is to clarify. So an expectation is, hey, I need you to clarify uh, what you are saying um, so I know that you know what I'm talking about. So if we're going to collaborate on it, I just need to know that you get what I'm saying. If not, then we're going to have issues. Then there's collaboration. And then collaboration is different than critique. Collaboration is like, hey, we're working on this together. Um, this isn't, hey, this is my idea, make it better. This is, let's, I've got something, let's build something together. So we're truly building together. Whereas critique is analyze. Critique would be the last one. So an expectation of critique is basically, hey, make this better. Some people take an idea and they put it out here and they go, hey, uh, Kevin, would you critique my idea? And thinkers will do this well. Um, and you shoot a hole in it and I go and take it away. And I'm like, Hey, good job. Thank you. I just made it better. Appreciate that. 
Well, that's ideal critique. A lot of feelers will take their idea and go, hey, Kevin, what do you think of it? And they'll put their idea right, right over my heart, right? Yeah. Total ownership of this puppy, right? And so then you shoot at it and then all of a sudden you see blood and you're like, why did you put it over your heart? Oh, you, you're taking this personal. No, this isn't personal. And yet, because we're so passionate, it, everything is personal, especially the feelers. So that's where critique versus being critical are, are different. So it crosses my mind. You're talking about collaboration. Um, for those of you listening to the <clears throat> podcast two weeks ago, we had an episode, we'll put this in the show notes, where I talked with Chris Deaver and um, Ian Clausen about their new book, which talks about co-creation and how it requires us to be brave to do that. And I think it requires us to be brave to, to, to know and understand what we need in this communication, in this relationship. And to and to be brave enough to say, hey, I right now what I need is care, not clarification, even for example, right? For so, sure. um, anything you want to say about that, about sort of the bravery that comes, yeah. or maybe how the words help us be braver, perhaps? Yeah, well, I mean, we have expectations. Wouldn't it be nice if we could share what those expectations are? <laughs> So all it is, is it's a transmission. Transmission has an expectation. Expectation has a code word attached to it. So by me coming to you and going, hey, Kevin, um, man, I, I've got some things I want to share. I need you to clarify them first because I, I really need you to help pull out what I'm trying to say. But I want your full collaboration, but not until I know you're completely on the same page with me. That should... It's almost like a transmission. You're aligning, you're being aligned to actually work together. So by doing this really, really well, it's it's me actually giving you the chance to help me. See, that's the part I love about this. It's giving you the chance to help me, right? So it it puts us in this space of we're in this together, which of course, if we're in, if we're in a relationship, we are in it together. Um, one of the things I wanted to do was read something from the book that basically you've already said, uh, but I'm going to I'm going to read it again, read it here and let you comment on it. Uh, you haven't said it quite this way uh, in the book. You said honor others by asking what code word they want from you. You've talked about telling people what code word you want, but this is saying honor them by asking. So say a little mm -hmm. bit more about that yeah so it's two ways right so here here's the reality let's say kevin let's say you and i are really close friends okay and we've spent a lot of time we would be if we've got more time together but let's just say uh you have uh, it's too cold one, in oklahoma city sorry uh, <laughs> you say one or two things that you'd want okay and i have one or two things i'd want so it, when i'm meeting with you i'm before we start you go hey man i want to meet with you i'm so excited i want to talk to you about some things i didn't miss it if I am, if I don't stop and go, okay, before you do, what do you, what are you hoping we accomplish? What do you need from me? Now, if you know the language, you go, oh, that's right. Yeah. I want, I want your collaboration, but I want you to clarify first. Perfect. Thank you. You've helped me be able to help you. So that's, that's the idea. I have the same expectations as well. So what we're doing is we're just meeting and matching expectations. That's the entire game that we're playing here. And so honor is really um, doing unto others as they would want done. It's the platinum rule. So it's actually providing what you would want because, and, and you may not even know that's what you want. But for me to stop you before we go and help you align it, it's going to, it's the chance for me to uh, increase my influence goes up dramatically. So sometimes uh, we read a book and we can get tremendous value from it for ourselves. Um, that's true. That is true with this book. But I think the the thing that uh, is reading been reinforced for me, Jeremy, in our conversation beyond when I read it, uh, is that this book, the Communication Code, is of greater value when both people in a in a relationship or everyone on a team all reads it because of the. Common, common language. language back to yep. this idea of common language where we started. And, and so I, I think that that's, I think is worth you thinking about as you're listening to us, watching us 
and uh, and and I, I would strongly encourage you to think about getting copies of this book, not just for yourself, but for uh, those that you work with. I'm sure you agree with that, but anything you want to <laughs> you no, want to no, add to that? It's true. We've been seeing it. We've been seeing it. Uh, it's it's just it's really healthy, and it, it's almost like uh, uh, oil in an engine. No one thinks about oil; they think about the engine. But it's the oil that makes the engine run, right? It's the oil that so that it removes friction. The communication code is like oil for a team or a marriage, uh, or uh, being a dad or you know a parent. It actually gives you the language so that we don't get into those drama loops, into the and, and pride doesn't enter, and walls don't go up. And so to unlock a relationship, if you just if you learn this, the few words in the system and the way to do this, it literally changes the entire the future of, of, of a relationship. Yeah, I, th I think that's right. And, and we have, we have long said um, th these ideas about the code words, notwithstanding that uh, workplace conflict, conflict, but certainly workplace conflict is caused by unmet or unclear expectations. And right. so, Drama is created when there are unmet or unclear expectations. And so the five code words help create a shared expectation. It's not, not all we need for clear expectations, no. but it's certainly a piece of that. Absolutely. Um, and, and you don't have to say them. A lot of times people go, oh, so it feels weird. Do you say them every single time? I'm like, no, you get so good at it that I can pick up on what you want. Even if you don't tell me, yeah. by asking a few questions, I can know. Uh, so, oh. Uh, Kevin, before we start, uh, you've got some great ideas here. How can I be most helpful? Exactly. So it doesn't have to. It doesn't have to be formulaic. However, like a lot of things like this, a little bit of that in your head to start with. I mean, if you're doing with this with someone else, using those words more at the start will help you to ingrain it yeah. and make it more more uh, real for and, you. And, and the the other thing I'd just say is um, we've even gone deeper into go. There's actually even a custom communication code. So now in the top three, four relationships that you have in your life, um, my wife and, and I, for an example, uh, here's exactly what I'm looking for. It's not just uh, I need I want celebration and I want your um, clarification. But here's exactly how I want them. I want clarification to look like this. And then she, she'll say, care, here's exactly what I want. I want you to listen and I want you to be interested in the things I'm interested in. Yeah. Okay. So that's, that's not care. just hearing my words, but actually listening. Right. But yeah. So interested in the things. So then when, when she's talking about a friend's daughter and where I might go, yeah, okay. That's my tendency. But then to go, okay, stop. We're in a hot tub. We're talking, having just a conversation. She wants to go deeper and talk about this other person. So she cares. What is it she cares about? Let me, let me. So now I'm trying to know because she gave me the code word. I'm trying to learn and ask questions about what is it that she's concerned about or really cares about with that person. And by asking a little bit and helping now, she feels that I care about the things she cares about. Yeah, I think that's really, really great. And again, the stuff we've been talking about everybody today applies to all parts of our lives, of course. But I, I do want to ask this question what, as people put their leadership hat on, Jeremy, sort of the last question before we, so we start to roll into the end of our conversation. Uh, what where should we as leaders start here? And, and maybe is there are, are there somewhat common mistakes you see leaders make in relationship to these code words? Is there anything that maybe would be a good place for people to start? Yeah, so actually in the book, the communication code, the first two chapters go back and they uh, it could be very painful because you actually take one relationship in your life or maybe two, and you start looking and they go, um, what's my, my historical power dynamic been with this person? Have I brought challenge and no support? Huh? I've been dominating that person. I've had a negative power play with them. Um, so I've got to make that right. Right. And then 
if I go, well, let me figure out who they are and how they're wired. Now the communication code chapter three, that gives you a chance to know the words, but then you just go have a conversation with them. If it's a team, do it together. We've had teams uh, actually do this, Kevin. We've had teams go, let's use the communication code as a system for our team meetings. We're going to start with celebration. What do, we, what do we need to celebrate that happened in the last week? Yeah. Little things, high five, good job. Okay, now care. Everyone doing okay? Is there anything we need to know in the company or on the team? Well, you know, Susan's grandfather died. Oh, thank you. Let's send some flowers. Uh, yeah, thanks for sharing. Right, care. Then we get into clarity, uh, clarification. Uh, here's what we're working on today. Is everyone clear on kind of what we're doing? Now collaboration, let's work on it. By the time you do that, you probably don't even need critique. There's nothing to critique because you've got an alignment. So it's a great way for organizations to, to use it for organization behavior, but it's also a one-to-one -one tool in, this, in the same right. I love that. So a um, couple more questions, Jeremy, before we finish. And I'm really, all right, I'm going to shift gears on us now. So if the expectation is we're going to keep talking about the book, that would be incorrect. Uh, so my question is, so Jeremy, what do you do for fun? Yeah. So um, that's, I create, I create, like, I actually, I like to travel. I like uh, to go, I like ambiance. I like friends and travel and go to places. Uh, and I meet people around the world and I like to create. So my, not just for business, but I like to build concepts and content. And that's what I do for fun. I mean, it sounds kind of nerdy. So I'll read a lot. I'll think a lot. Right now I'm working on um, fear-based leadership and fear-based performance. And I'm learning so much um, that it's just fun for me. I love that. And and you, you mentioned reading. So what are you reading these days? So right now I'm reading an old book. Uh, it's called A More Excellent Way. Uh, and it's this, it's this old um, kind of doctor type guy who went around to these communities, and it's actually he saw how fear, worry, insecurity uh, affects health, and he ties um, he ties certain issues like arthritis to bitterness. It's not saying that anyone who has arthritis is bitter. That's not it at all. But he's saying that. If you do forgiveness exercises, it actually affects your health. So I'm I'm just interested in how certain relational issues can actually show up in physical uh, manifestations, and uh, it's just kind of an interesting reading right now. Uh, there's no purpose for it other than uh, I'm learning right now. What we're re well, that's a plenty good reason to read everybody is to learn. Uh, and, and I think that sometimes we need, and I need, I'll say it for me, I need to read uh, with a little less purpose. Uh, sometimes, you know, although I think you clearly described that there is a purpose there, but I think that sometimes we all just need to find something to read that is maybe not in our norm. And we never know what, what connections we will draw, which Jeremy is actually one of the reasons why I always ask this question of smart people that I meet and why I always ask it on the show. Um, the, the question you've most wanted me to ask from the very, very beginning, Jeremy, is this, where can we learn more? Where do you want to point people? Where can people learn more about you, the work, the book, et cetera? So my uh, speaking site and all that is jeremykubachek.com, which is hard to spell. There you go. Thank you. And then uh, Amazon has all our books and then Giant Worldwide is our actual business. Um, and so if you want to find out more about what we do and how we change the world, then that's what where to go. Giantworldwide.com uh, is where you can go to get that, learn about the content that they've created and the way that they share it and, and how it might uh, help you uh, or those around you. So, uh, Jeremy, thanks so much for being here. Glad, super, super glad to have you back on the show. Uh, but before we say our goodbyes, I've got a question for everyone else. And that question for all of you, if you've been here before, you know the question. Now what? What are you going to do with this? Maybe you have already identified a relationship that you feel like these ideas could help you with. Maybe 
uh, you want to think differently about the expectations that you're setting with someone or someone's. Maybe there's a specific idea that you heard today that can help you be more effective, whatever that might be. I'm not going to presume what that is for you, but what I am going to assume is that if you take action on what you learned rather than just saying, well, this was good, it will be far more valuable for you. I hope that you will do that. And uh, Jeremy, thanks again for being here. Such a pleasure to have you. Uh, it's a great book. Thanks, Steve, for me uh, and everybody. I hope that you will go out and get your copy of the communication code. Thanks again, Jeremy. Thanks, Kevin. Cheers. And with that, everybody, um, you know that we'll be back. So make sure you come back. So if you haven't subscribed to the podcast, make sure you do that. If you just happen to run into me on whatever social channel you're on, make sure that you follow us there so you get future episodes because we'll be back next week with another episode of the Remarkable Leadership Podcast.